and Wardo7 here with another video on my stream setup. This time I'm going to talk to you about a beloved piece of hardware called the Xbox One Elite Controller, now called Series 1, designated more than likely actually, because Series 2 was announced at E3 in 2019. The Series 2 is going to come out November 4th for $180, while Series 1 came out all the way back in 2013, November 22nd. That's a long time and I personally didn't even realize it. This controller is available for $150 brand new on white or black. Microsoft still sells it and you can actually find it for renewed around $120. That's what I've seen on Amazon. I am hoping, but I wouldn't be surprised if the prices don't go down, but I'm, I'm hoping the prices will go down once the new one actually comes out. But due to the fact that they're being pre-ordered at, at the price that it is right now, it's probably going to stay the same since there isn't a day and night difference between the two. But we'll see what they do. Let's take a look at it, shall we? This, ladies and gentlemen, is Series 1 of the Elite series of Microsoft Xbox One Elite controllers. As you can see, it looks good. And I do admit, it is a little dated design-wise, at least when compared to the Astro C40 which to be honest it looks just newer and more fancy but let's be also honest the astro c40 came out just earlier this year at the higher price of 200 dollars and it is newer than five years old okay the elite controller is older than five years therefore of course the design language is gonna differ quite a bit the review for the c40 for the PlayStation 4 and PC, I'll be making that for you in the next video. But for now, we're going to talk about just the Elite. The triggers fascinate me. It is one of my favorite things of this controller. The size is perfect, the sensation, the, the feeling is great, and plus, they vibrate. Like, I'm not lying. These triggers, most reviews don't say this, but the, the fetching triggers vibrate, man. When you're playing Rise of the Tomb Raider or shooting bad guys up in Gears 4 or killing aliens in Halo 5 or racing through the tracks in Forza 7, just feeling the vibrations on your trigger is a sweet, simple yet special experience. In Gears, I'm so used to the vibrations that I actually include it in my timing whenever I shoot the Nasher or the Lancer, just that vibration lets me know a certain time between the vibrations when I can shoot if the audio cues are not registering or even the visual ones Like when you're just flying almost 200 miles an hour and you have to hit the brakes because the curbs coming up or something And just all those things put together when it comes to the controller the experience I just don't see myself being able to use a normal controller for prolonged periods of time because of that So here's the bottom side of this controller and we have a lot to talk about so we got the triggers and there's the trigger locks on the little green things you can see there these trigger locks allow the triggers to go about halfway in before it registers instead of having to go all the way in it is really helpful for using for example the snub in gears or the plasma pistol in halo i do have to warn you though that at least, for example, like in PUBG, if you can't accelerate vehicles to their full throttle if you're using the trigger locks. Also, on the Halo Chief, Master Chief Collection, the plasma pistol, if I remember right, Halo 4 and, well, separately Halo 5, you can't charge it to shoot at it, shoot at people and disable their shields. So that is a minus for that, but it's easy to just disengage or engage the lock anyway. Another favorite part of mine is the besides the vibrations of course and the buttons and all that stuff It's the pedals just like vibrations people once you go pedals. I personally don't see myself ever going back There is of course campaign racing games where I don't usually use the the pedals um, fighting games for example, I don't use them but for, in a game where it requires jumping and aiming at the same time. I use it all the time no exceptions and games where there's no actual jumping for example gears i use it for the tech cum if you look at some of my videos you'll see that the tech cum is actually really useful right before a confrontation and taking your finger off the thumbstick to 
get the Tapcom going, it can get your shot out of sync. Another thing that it works also really well is on Fortnite for building, switching between building and your pickaxe. The buttons are a little sensitive, I'll tell you that. Uh, if you lay them on your lap, it's gonna trigger them or specific surfaces, but you get used to it and you kind of learn where to put it and what not to put it. If you can't seem to learn that, you can just, at least for me, it was pretty easy to learn to just double tap the green button in the front and that deactivates them or you do it again and it'll reactivate them. So right before I need to lay it down, I just hit that button twice and lay it down and then pick it back up and turn it back on. It kind of becomes mumble, <laughs> muscle memory. Now, speaking of the green button in the front, it all it also works for synchronizing to the console or synchronizing with the USB stick uh, for PC, or you can just avoid the stick and just plug it in directly to your PC using the included cable, which is a micro USB. Also on the back, you got your connector for the keyboard for chatting. You also have your aux for headphones and microphone. And sadly, this version, not like the new one, it does not come with Bluetooth built in. Or actually even the normal Xbox controllers. One of the things that's also great on this controller, I know there's tons of great things, is that you can switch the joysticks and the D-pad. What do I mean by that? You can swap the heads, which by the way, on my personal experience on the joystick swapping heads thingy, I'm not a big fan of it. The heads, I don't like the really tall one or the fungus like PS control, PS shock controller-ish like uh, joystick head. I'm not a big fan of any of them. I've tried them. Uh, I actually just like the default low profile default joystick head. The tension on the sticks can't be adjusted hardware wise, but it can be software and they're harder or more firm than the Astro C40s, which I personally prefer. They are a little heavier too, or heavier feeling than the Astro C40s or the normal Xbox One controller, which I prefer also. The D-pad is something I love about this controller. Swapping it for the circular shape changes my life. I always use it for pretty much any game. Gears of War 4, when you want to just swap your shotgun real quick, you can just hit tap that corner on the top left and it'll give you your shotgun or vice versa if you have it, you know, the other way around for your Lancer. But anyway, just switching weapons, you hit the corner and it'll treat it as, if you time it right, specific top or left that you want on that swap. When it comes to fighting games, they I've read and heard online that it is the preferable one, but for me, honestly, at, at least I don't do much fighting games on Xbox. I pretty much do all my fighting games on PlayStation because I bought them there first since the PS4 Pro came out first. But definitely on the Xbox, I will keep trying fighting games with that cross D-pad instead of the... I will actually try fighting game, more fighting games on the Xbox with the circular shaped D-pad instead of the cross plus sign one. But for now, I just don't see it as useful as just using the plus sign one or the joystick. But let me know what your preference is if you actually have some true skills with the circular shaped one. Now this is the case where your controller comes in. It is really well organized. Everything fits nicely. It comes with a cable. It's long enough for pretty much any use. It also has some cool green color texture to it. And the smell the scent on this box and this controller is great if you bought it new if you didn't also let me know if it comes with a smell but if you bought it new open that baby up give it a nice sniff and let me know what you think i am sure this thing smells like premium and let me know if i'm crazy in the comments or i'm right to kind of reach the end of this video we'll talk about the app which is available on windows 10 and the xbox one family of consoles where you can software wise adjust your triggers even further than the actual trigger locks would allow you to. You can fine tune everything really, the joysticks. Uh, I personally use on my second preset on the controller, on my second slot, I have the left stick set to aggressive for dashing and doing all sorts of things when you're shooting, moving right and left. My right one's on a smooth aiming to help me have higher sensitivity yet more control over my shot. I can't do the aggressive one on the right, for real, it's crazy. If you can, let me know and show me because that stuff is nuts and I enjoy it, especially with Titanfall controls, therefore Apex, but anyway. 
the buttons I actually have them on default all of them no mods there no changing anything and then slot one it's pretty much default everything joysticks everything is just default for games like Metro Exodus and just camping games more for universal access to all of my games but I've actually been using slot 2 quite a bit so you might not need to be swapping much if you keep the buttons in their default settings the app is really simple if you have questions let me know I'll answer them for you but it's pretty self-explanatory this controller besides is oldish look to it compared to the newer ones its quality build is asking for a big price and it delivers a big price quality build the one thing though that i have to warn you about is the bumpers specifically the left bumper if you're playing gears of war in tournament mode you're gonna break that puppy i've broken three of them and it is annoying it is easy to fix but it's just annoying that it is called an elite controller and it should come out of the right, right out of the box it should be built for their first party titles including gears but anyway they say elite series 2 has been redesigned from the ground up and inside out um, they showed the bumpers in a video that they were being tested with by machines and so I mean they're not gonna go out and say they messed up because it's no, it's not a huge deal and it's a company you know they're not gonna admit to that but definitely they are showing a bit of focus on that so I hope that series 2 fixes the bumper weakness on this controller I've heard reports too on the grip falling off and stuff but because I've only been able to use this controller for no more than eight months before the bumper breaks I haven't had that issue I always just return and get a new one at Best Buy through their geek squad warranty it does not come with a rechargeable battery the new one is supposed to but you can easily get ones on Amazon or something and honestly if you're thinking about upgrading your game your your gaming controls inputs I'm telling you this thing's worth it don't you're not gonna regret it as long as you don't break the bumper and the series 2 honestly I'll wait for it if you're at this point waiting for one but if you can't get this one sell it later because I think it's gonna retain quite a bit of its value and that's yeah my opinion on it if you like the video and the control please give it a like and subscribe hit the Dale Bisbo up there the Bell Wismo I forgot how Rene Ritchie says it on his videos but anyway the bell notification so you can know when the Astro C40 review is out or the series 2 elite controller and thanks for your time leave me in the comments what you think give me a visit on twitter instagram under the name of nwardo7 and i'll catch you all on the next video thank you